Hi guys, Rich from Trackspark here. Hope everybody is well and welcome to another little tutorial. Um, this month is on sort of um, structuring your mix. So it, in terms of groups and subgroups and things like that and the benefit and then what I do to those groups and um, and then the benefits of, of doing it that way, I guess. So... Um, uh, let's yeah, let's get going. Uh, as you can see in front of me, here's a here's the session in front of me. There's quite a lot sort of going on. Um, so what I'll do is just show you sort of how I'll sort of how I'll group how I've grouped here, I guess how I've grouped each um, set of instruments and subgroups, and then what I've put on them to to help with the mix anyway. But I guess uh, it might be nice just to quickly listen to the tune anyway, just to see sort of what we're listening to and then we'll we'll get into it okay so there we go it's a bit of um like a quirky electro beat type thing. I think if we just listen to this end, I think we can hear even more stuff going on. So there's a lot of instruments going on at the same time. Again, obviously we can see that just from looking at it, but we can hear that it was pretty busy at the end there. So um, firstly, <clears throat> what I would do is get all of my instruments uh similar sounding instruments i.e drums guitars bass uh vocals keys all of that those and then group those in their group so a drums group a guitars group etc um just like i've done here so of all of these orange ones i've colored them because it's you know a lot easier to sort of find your way around a mix and it looks pretty so all of these orange ones they're my drums and then they're all in um, a bus here a group called all drums uh, all my purple ones here are my bass in a but in a group or a bus um, these gray ones here are uh, sort of a synthy keyboard thing and then I've got um, these ukuleles here at the bottom um, and then I've got all my vocals, which are slightly different colours, but they're all in, in, a, in a group there as well. So I've got them all in their main groups. Um, but let's just go back to the top here. Um, so what the, the I guess the main sort of thing for, for grouping them is for ease of control. So in terms of EQ and level, um, there is, I think there's a, about 25 different sort of drum tracks here going on at the going on at any one time and um, so if I wanted to change the volume of any of them or the EQ of you know certain things I've got to go through 25 different drum tracks which is a nightmare so because they're in a main drums group and I wanted to turn all my drums up or drums down or just EQ them a little bit or give them a bit of compression I can do that uh, just on one main bus so but also because like this is a busy mix this is there's a lot going on like i said i've got subgroups so i've got within that within that main group bus all drums i've got things like my clap rim group here just here um so let's just listen so i've got similar sounds within the drums um, groups. I've got my hats and my tambos. I've got my uh, kick here called deep kick. I guess the reason, let's just zoom in a little bit, I guess the reason that this one's grouped, you might say, oh it's all the same sound, it's all the same sample, um, why is it not on one track uh, or one channel? because we've got sort of quite a long wave here um, and it's quite busy so if I had this on that one it'd be covering it up so I've got the same sample on three different tracks um, and then I've grouped them into this group here called deep group uh, deep kick sorry not deep group deep kick um, 
because I want them again to act as one sound. So that's another reason for grouping grouping things together. Um, if we keep going up, I've got this TR8 group here, which is um, a drum machine, TR8 drum machine. So I've got all of my sounds from my TR8, but within my TR8, I've got my cymbals, I've got my hats, I've got my toms, I've got my other kick here, which is quite a subby kick. So I've got subgroups within the main group. And again, that's for ease of control just within that main drum boss. Um, and different, and you know, different EQs and different compression on e on on uh, on each group as well. So, so that's the reason for doing that. Now, if you look here as well, I've got my beats. This is my beats group. So that's got everything above that, and apart from this beats para, so which is my parallel compression. So I've got my all of my beats plus my parallel compression to my beats, all grouped within this main uh, group channel here called All Drums. And the, the reason really for doing that is if I wanted to change the level of my beats um, and then I'm pulling the fader up and down, I'm not, the, the parallel compression is going to be sort of staying where it was as well. So I'm not going to be... Uh, consistent in the way that I'm moving the levels for that and, and the way that it's affecting the whole the whole mix so I wanted to group those together uh, just again for for level control um, and then so again uh, I've got subgroups within I've got all bass here so I've got a, a bass top sound and then a sub that goes along with it and they're both grouped in this group here, this bass, all bass. I've got all of these sort of uh, synthy sounds, keyboard. Grouped under one group. I've got all of my vocals here, um, but within smaller groups. So I've got this group here. I've got this group here. I've got... Uh, where is it? Fran here as well. So different groups within the main groups, like I said. Um, yeah, so the uh, I guess, yeah, like I said, the main reason for doing it is, is sort of level control. And uh, on, on each sort of main bus, I've got some compression. So if I go to all my bases, I've got this LA2A here. LA2, sorry. Yeah, no, LA2A. Eh? Um, and if we just listen. We can, we can see that there's not a lot happening there, just a little bit. And that just glues the part together. So I've got that on all my drums as well. So I've got a bit of a LA2 here. Again, LA2A eh? on all my drums. Again, not loads happening. It's just gluing it all together. Um, and I do like this LA2. It's a really nice sort of transparent um, compression as well, and it gives it. A, it's got a really nice warm sound to it. Um, but it helps to control, you know, each group, glue it all together, um, and sort of li more compression in little in little amounts rather than little and often. I guess more compression in stages in little amounts is better than just whacking a massive load of compression on the master bus because it's just going to be all over the place then um right so so that's the sort of reason for that um and then i guess the the other the other main well the other things you can do within groups is you know small automation um, there isn't i don't think there is any on this actual track here only a tiny bit uh there but none on the groups actually can't really see any um but you could automate your groups um, if you wanted the drums to come down in a section or the vocals to go up in another section, i.e. in your vocals to go up in the chorus, all of your vocals, then you haven't got to go through five, six, eight, twelve different vocal tracks uh, and automate them up in the chorus. You can just automate the automate the group channel. 
Um, the other thing for grouping is, which I find useful, is using sidechain compression. So um, we've done a, a couple of things on sidechain compression. If you don't know what it is, then, and, then go back and check out sort of side side chaining. But it helps to carve out space in the mix. So if I've got, let's say here on this, um, let's see if we've got any side chaining on here. Yeah, so on this group here of, of synths, I've got this C1 compressor and it's in sidechain mode and um, it's being sidechained from from the kick drums. So these 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 here, if we just have a look, it's going to my 101 group. It's also going to all my bass and my keys. Um, so I'm able to uh, carve out space f f between the kick drums and all of those synth parts or all of my bass parts um, to, to help sort of create space within the mix. So that's another great, great reason for using sort of, um, you know, uh, bus channels and grouping things as well. Um, yeah, so um, I think that's about it. Hopefully your mix will um, start to work a little better. So uh, let's just play it again towards the end and then we'll leave you to it. Cheers guys.